Thanks everyone for joining us in this meeting. Here we will present and demo the optical test measurement system, the OE Waves OE4000. This system was introduced to the market in 2014, and since then it has been successful and popular with our customers. It is used for phase noise, frequency noise, line width, and ring characterization of laser light over a wide range of wavelengths. First, few words about OE Waves. OE Waves is located in Pasadena, California. It was founded in 2000 with the mission to provide next generation laser and microwave to millimeter wave solutions using our proprietary microwave photonics technologies. Our product portfolio includes small and miniature optoelectronic oscillators, ultra narrow line with lasers, and microwave and optical test and measurement systems. OE Waves is also the provider of research and development services when other technologies failed to provide the needed solution. Among our most popular products are the IQ narrow line with laser, an optical test measurement system that we present today. The narrow line with laser uses our crystalline opto optical micro resonator uh, proprietary technology to dramatically reduce the frequency noise of semiconductor laser via self-injection locking. This results in uh, reducing the noise dramatically and producing a very narrow laser line width. These lasers are available in wavelength ranging from UV to far infrared. Most popular are 7, 18 nanometer, 1, 1 1.5 and 2 micrometer. The tiny uh, low mass micro resonators ensure the laser is less sensitive to environmental noise, such as shock, vibration, and thermal fluctuations. In the bottom half of this slide, you can see our OE4000. The OE Waves OE4000 unit is fully automated optical test measurement system that allows for very low noise measurements of lasers, frequency, phase noise, and ring. This system utilizes a unique and proprietary, proprietary homodyne method that supports a wide range of wavelength measurements without the need for a reference laser, as is typically needed in heterodyne systems. The system is standalone unit and do not require additional equipment. It operates with ease, speed, and precision. It comes with simple and intuitive user graphic interface, preloaded to a PC. Let's dive into some technical terms and discuss the importance of this system and how the OE4000 can be valuable and useful. We start with a common parameter often used to describe the laser spectral coherence or frequency noise, the laser line width. The laser line width was derived and introduced by Charlotte Towns to describe the noise due to spontaneous emission. This quantum noise induced line width typically describes the instantaneous line width and has a Lorentzian shape. Quantum noise, however, is not the only noise source. Technical noise sources exist in the laser or the environment. These noise sources could include driver noise, electromagnetic interference, acoustic noise, vibration, thermal fluctuations, airflow, humidity effects, pressure change, mechanical degradation, aging, and more. Each of these noise sources will have different time scale, resulting with laser frequency changing over time at different speeds. This means that the laser line width is not a fixed parameter. Its value will depend on the observation time. Typically, longer observation time will result with broadening of the line width and changing its shape. Therefore, it is clear that line width is not a good parameter to describe the laser phase and frequency noise especially since most laser manufacturers provide a single value for the laser line width, and in many cases without providing information on the observation time nor its behavior over time. Fortunately, there is a better way to measure the and present frequency and phase noise. This is via the noise spectral density. In this way, every noise source could be presented by different noise slope versus the Fourier frequency or show up as spurious content. Some examples are shown here on the right plot. 
Quantum noise, for example, will have a 20 dB slope in phase noise, or a flat response in frequency noise. Driver noise will typically have flicker of frequency noise with 30 dB slope in phase noise. AC power with 50 or 60 Hz cycles will show up as sharp spurious in these frequencies and their harmonics. Let's recap the last few slides, since this pertains to important issues related with laser noise characterization. As was mentioned, laser line width is not a single parameter. Simply since there are many noise sources, each with its own one or more time scales. Therefore, it is impossible to describe laser noise using one line width. Noise spectrum density, on the other end, can provide much more information within a single measurement. The OE4000 directly measures the noise power spectral density and provides a better picture of the noise sources inside and out of the laser. From the spectral noise density, one can obtain information on the laser noise sources at different frequencies or time scales, and even more important, helps the user to identify major noise sources and troubleshoot and reduce their effect on laser frequency noise. Moreover, the laser line with the different time scales can, can be calculated and estimated from the phase noise, allowing the user to get complete understanding of the laser behavior. Here we have the OE4000 datasheet. This system is available over a wide range of wavelengths from about 650 nanometer to over 2 micrometer. There are many options and features for the customer to choose from, including multiple or combined bands, RIN, noise floor levels, power levels, offset frequency range, and more. The combinations are endless and allows the user to tailor the system to their need. Here, as, as an example, we see a phase noise plot of a fiber laser as measured with the OE4000. One can see a peak at about 200 kHz offset. It is due to the laser relaxation oscillations. Such peak will be hard and even impossible to describe in terms of line width. However, noise spectral density measurement can easily identify it. This could be a very important and valuable info for applications requiring low noise at the, this particular frequency offset. The datasheet shown earlier provides lots of information about the system capabilities. Here we show, for example, the noise flow and line width range for two noise options, the standard noise level and the ultra low noise option. The C-band standard noise flow system can measure down to 3 Hz per root Hz at 1 MHz offset and 10 Hz at 10 microseconds of instantaneous line width, with at least a line width of 1 kHz to 10 MHz range at 10 milliseconds. The C-band ultra low noise flow on the other end can measure down to 0.2 Hz per root Hz at 1 MHz offset and 0.5 Hz at 10, less than 10 microseconds of instantaneous line width, with at least a line width of 3 Hz to 30 kHz range at 10 milliseconds. Next, we will share with you some slides showing the system GUI and its features. The GUI was designed with the user in mind. It is intuitive and easy to use. The main GUI shown here has few types on the left side and at the plot area on the right. The area in the green frame shows the parameters the user can select before starting a measurement. They include the frequency offset range, resolution bandwidth, number of averages, phase noise or in selection, and channel or band selection. The type of plot can be selected as well. There are four types of noise uh, presentations. Phase noise in units of dBc per Hz, spurious level in units of dBc, frequency noise in units of Hz square per Hz, and frequency noise in units of Hz per root Hz. The drop-down list shows how, how to easily select between RIN and phase noise. Once these parameters are selected, the user can simply press Start and the system will automatically make a measurement. 
Once the measurement is complete, the user can save the data to a file. Reference data files can be loaded as well to compare between different measurements. The Advanced tab allows the user to calculate the instantaneous and or extended line widths at different time scales. It also allows the user to find the noise level at particular frequencies and shows some sensitivity information. Next, we will show a demo of the system measuring laser noise. It consists of the analyzer system and the PC. And a view from different angles around the unit. The two input ports for this specific unit are the FCA PC fiber connectors, one for phase noise and the other for wind measurements. The GUI with the phase noise plot is shown in the computer screen. We will start with a demonstration of a phase noise measurement. First, the user selects the desired Fourier or offset frequency range, shown here by the top left decade table. In this case, starting from 10 Hz to 10 MHz. The user can select the resolution band with a number of averages for each decade or keep the default values. Then, when ready, simply press the green start button. The system will then start completely automated measurement via internal optimization and measuring the sensitivity. Once this is achieved, the system will start collecting data. This is done a decade at a time and is indicated by the red blinking area at the frequency range column. At the same time, one can see the progress, shown in the right column. It basically indicates how many of the samples were taken so far relative with the number of averages. When a decade measurement is completed, the data will be presented in the plot, as you can see here, and the system will proceed to measure the next decade. The plotted data shows the phase noise power spectral density. Sometimes it's preferable or beneficial to observe the frequency noise level. This can be easily obtained and plotted by selecting frequency noise in the plot down menu. In this demo, we show the frequency noise in units of hertz square per hertz. Other options such as frequency noise in units of hertz per root hertz or spur level are available as well. Laser line width estimation is available in the Advanced tab. Instantaneous line width is on the top, and extended line width at various observation times is just below it. RIN measurement is obtained by selecting RIN in the measurement type drop-down menu. Then, making sure that all the settings at the table are as desired and pressing Start. The measurement is fully automated as well and typically take a couple of minutes to complete.
Here we see ring measurement of fiber laser with a typical relaxation oscillation peak at about 200 kHz. This measurement finalizes our OE4000 demo. Thank you everyone for joining us in this presentation and demo of the OE4000. Please do not hesitate to contact us with any question. The contact information is available in this slide.